running throughout Georgetown. Christmas Day fires leave 13 homeless, cops shut down Chutney Jam, and one firm gets over half of Health Ministry's drug budget. I am Nuri Kopal Ford and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592 659 6151. It rained heavily this morning, covering Georgetown and the surrounding coastline with several inches of flood water. Despite the floods, the city's drainage pumps are 100% all purple and are currently draining the toxic soup of sewage, street waste, and runoff that envelopes our dear capital every rainy day. Non-management employees of Republic Bank Guyana are the newest workers in this nation to become unionized. They are now represented by the recently formed Guyana Civil Servants and General Workers Union, and the two sides are due to sign a collective labor agreement next year. Union President Gregory Gasper said of the almost 598 workers, more than 330 voted yes, marking the first time the banking workers have been unionized in Guyana. Casper said they would eventually be reaching out to the union in Trinidad that represents Republic Bank workers over there. Three fires on Christmas Day have left 13 people homeless. Early Christmas morning, a lit mosquito coil reportedly triggered a fire that gutted a home in West Rumveld, Georgetown. Hours later, another fire burned down one home in Ankerville, Port Morant, Berbice, and damaged two other homes. The cause of the blaze was not determined. Then later that evening, an overloaded electrical circuit triggered a fire in friendship on the East Coast. On a much brighter note, 10 Christmas babies were born at the GPHC on Saturday. The First Lady visited the hospital and took pictures with the staff and the mothers of five newborn baby girls and five baby boys. Continuing the age-old tradition of shoving a camera in the face of women just mere hours after having to push out a child the size of a watermelon. I'm sure they probably don't want to camera them. Anyway. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale, this is 2011 Subaru Forester XT. It comes with all-wheel drive, driving modes, Bluetooth, mug rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo, reverse camera, rear spoiler, and much, much more. Buy cash for $4.7 million, or pay down as low as $940,000 down with around $106,500 monthly for four years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for my info. Or visit the showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Street, Queenstown, or Lot 2 Lamar Street, and tell them the Rico Century for this sweet day. On Christmas Eve, 36 year old martial arts expert and bodyguard Garfield Newton was fatally shot and robbed on Sussex Street in Alboystown, Georgetown. Police said three unidentified men attacked Newton as he was returning to a Bahari Group vehicle from a goldsmith's shop. The suspects ran off with his jewelry and his gun before leaving him to die in the streets. The Savagery of Men On Saturday, the skeletal remains suspected to be that of 57-year-old Dan Marty Paul Diopol were found by her brother-in-law in her home in Triumph, East Coast Emerora. Dear Paul lived alone and would normally isolate herself for long stretches of time. Relatives could not say if she was ill prior to her passing, nor has she had ever visited a medical facility, at least recently, so they had no idea. She was last seen alive about three weeks ago by her neighbors. Nevertheless, the valuables in her home were left undisturbed, nor were there any signs of forced entry to the home. On Saturday, 25-year-old George LaRose was admitted to the hospital in a serious condition after he reportedly collided into a trailer at Kukwani Park Access Road, Burbis River. According to the cops, LaRose was standing on a grass parapet conversing with several persons in a yard adjacent to the road. During this time, a truck was passing. LaRose then suddenly turned around and ran into the rear of the trailer, causing him to sustain injuries to the head. Serious injuries, I might add. The matter was reported, and the driver of the truck was arrested. You there, Mr. Truckman! Get all your high-quality truck parts at 5-15% to 15 off during the Christmas season. Nice up your truck and get it ready for work in 2022. Visit Powered Automotive Truck Spares and Engine Parts at 1161 EE Eccles. They are the biggest truck parts store in Guyana with a wide variety of parts and exceptional customer service. Call or WhatsApp 697-0171.
The cop shot down a massive unauthorized party at the Arakari Resort in Region 3 on Sunday night. According to reports, the Chutney Jam party was extensively promoted and featured both local and foreign performers, both of which were not allowed by the current laws. When the members of the joint services arrived, patrons and even the promoters started to flee the venue. Only the host of the show, known as Golden Child, was arrested. Some of the music equipment was also seized. However, this wasn't the only illegal party this weekend. Tower Hotel hosted one after the curfew was in effect. No one was punished for that one. Interestingly enough, Tower Suites was among those who were previously suspended for operating in breach of the national health regulations. And despite that, they continue to flout the law. Authorities said, though, that in the future, the artists, the promoters, and even the venue owners themselves may get arrested in the future. But, you know, we'll just have to see if they'll actually do that. So, it's now time for today's Rona Report. Today, the nation recorded 12 new cases. There are now 1,050 persons dead, 6 in the ICU, 682 in home isolation. And the total number of confirmed cases around the nation now stands at 39,119. So, please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six feet of space between you and others. Sorry folks, there is no vaccine update for today as they have yet to give us the numbers. You can move into your very own luxury home in 2022. Lenora Estates, West Coast and Marara Properties could have you saying goodbye to the landlord in no time. Call or tap 592-618-5702 and ask about in-house finance. Now for our stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? The government enriching their friends at the expense of the public. While 2020 was a hard year for most Guyanese, it surely wasn't one for the likes of Bobby Ramroop and Jack Leo's other friends in the private sector. In 2020, the Ministry of Health allocated $8.1 billion to drug purchases from over 33 different companies. And $4.4 billion of that went to just one company. Can you guess which? Well, if you said new GPC, then you're absolutely correct. Western Scientific Company came in second at $1.8 billion, almost a quarter of that first amount, while Caribbean Medical Supplies Inc. received $383.2 million and Paho $378.3 million. All other contracts were below $200 million. While it's bad enough that Ramroop is getting half the money out of the whole budget, but even worse is that the ministry did not ensure that it has actually gotten its money's worth from all of these suppliers, not just new GPC. As of September, $1.5 billion worth of drugs and medical supplies were paid for, but not received at the time of the audit. And the receipt of an additional $1.851 billion worth of drugs could not be verified. This means that $3.3 billion of that $8.1 billion has been effectively wasted. Whereas yet the only media entity that seems to even care about this fact is Kai Chair, and me of course. Procurement fraud is one of the most common forms of government corruption internationally, and Guyana is not exempt. The government has yet to choose the members of the National Procurement and Tender Administration Board. This has been the case for the life of this government so far. It would seem that if the people do not demand that the government convene a new board immediately, the wholesale distribution of contracts without proper oversight will continue. But I would say that we need to take it a step further. As a part of constitutional reform, the government needs to have stricter requirements regarding the tendering of contracts and the oversight of such fulfillment. The system needs to not only be strict, but also completely open to public scrutiny, because to allow this to continue unabated is pretty stupid. Moving on to our uncut news, views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Friday's question was, where are you from, and how are you spending your Christmas? RC View Farm said, eating pepper pot and bread with my El Dorado in the Virgin Islands. Happy Christmas. And a happy Christmas to you too. Troy Teram says, up in New York here. Pepper pot is about as Guyanese as Christmas can get, right? It's never official until I taste that oxtail. I know, I mean, come on, if you didn't eat pepper pot, did you really celebrate Christmas? And finally, David Passard says, I'm from Blair Mouth, and I'm spending my holiday broke, because Blair Mouth Estate did not pay the 7%, nor our one-week holiday pay, so we broke. 
And of course, as expected, the government goes and makes an announcement, but things on the ground are completely different than what the government says. I'm sorry to hear that, David. I hope you get paid before the new year. Before we get to tonight's question, are you still using a Mongo Pelter by choice, or you simply can't afford a new cell phone? Good news for you. Digital is slashing prices in half on the Samsung A3, the DL3 Pro, and Pro Plus this Christmas. Upgrade to a brand new smartphone for just $9,750 at any cellular plus digital store. This offer includes a free one-month Prime bundled data plan. Pro tip, smartphones make good presents. So, for tonight's question. The pumps might be working, but clearly the drains are not. How can the government ensure the drains remain clear and operational throughout the city? Should we find people for dumping their trash in the drains, or maybe we should require a clean drain law for each property owner? Who knows? What would you suggest? Think about that question to us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in the next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Paul for saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!